Yes, they've been delayed, but the wait is over, and we're excited. It's time to talk about the iPhone 12 and the iPhone 12 Pro. Stephen Fennick from Tech Guide here, and today we're talking about the iPhone 12 and the iPhone 12 Pro. We've been reviewing them for a few days now. They've finally arrived. It's been a difficult year for Apple with the coronavirus and delays to production. Supply chain has been affected, but now the wait is over. We're talking, though, in late October about an iPhone launch. Normally, September is iPhone month, but the good news is it was worth the wait. Before we dive into the review, I thought we'd go back and look at an unboxing video. This really shows how small the iPhone 12 packaging has become now that there are no earphones and chargers in the box. Here we have the iPhone 12 and the iPhone 12 Pro. Now these are the much smaller boxes as you can see. There's no charger, there is no earphones in here. It says on the back that the e charger and earphones sold separately but you can just see how much smaller the box is. And just to give you a comparison, that's the iPhone 11 box, the iPhone 11 Pro Max box. So that's, that's the 12 Pro next to the 11 Pro Max box. Just you can just see the thickness is completely, uh, it, this is almost half the width of the current, of the 11 Pro box. But let's take a look. Let's unbox the 11 Pro first of all. And there it is facing up. This is the Pacific Blue iPhone 12 Pro. And there is just the one sticker on the back, on the front I should say, on the screen. The phone's right there, and in the box is the USB-C to USB to Lightning cable, and then there's also just some uh, the the SIM the SIM ejector and also a sticker and the paperwork. So that's all there is in the box. Now that's why it is so narrow. Let's take a look at the. This is the now just the iPhone 12. Now this is blue as well, and there we go. Oh, that's a lovely blue color. That's really deep blue, like a like a na like a navy blue color. It's really glossy and shiny. There's a sticker on the front, and again in the box, cable paperwork. It's fair to say this is probably the biggest iPhone launch for many years. Not only is there a new design, but there's a faster processor, a much improved camera, and finally, Apple has added 5G to their iPhones. A lot of people have been waiting. Apple has waited. Apple played a real wait and see game with 5G. If they had a release it a year ago, the 5G networks just weren't as expansive as they are today. The biggest change to the iPhone 12 is the design. It's really easy to spot the changes here. Gone are the curved edges and in its place are these new flat edges. Reminiscent of the iPhone 4 and 5 from up to 10 years ago. On the 12, they had that has an aluminium band around the phone and on the 12 Pro, that is stainless steel, really nice glossy stainless steel, surgical grade stainless steel as a matter of fact. These Super Retina XDR OLED displays have a 2000 to 1 contrast ratio with twice as many pixels as the iPhone 11. The other addition to the iPhone 12 display is ceramic shield. Now, Apple says this offers four times more drop protection. Isn't that the worst feeling? You drop your iPhone and just hope it doesn't break. Well, 
if you are dropping an iPhone 12, the chances of breaking the screen are four times less thanks to that added strength. One of the biggest improvements for the iPhone 12 is 5G. Now this has been a long time coming. Apple didn't want to jump into 5G too early. If they had released 5G with the iPhone 11, the coverage in Australia at that time was only minimal. Yes, I know Samsung and Huawei and LG, Google, they all released 5G phones. Nearly two years ago, we saw the first 5G phones on the market. But at that time, the network is, was only in its infancy. Fast forward to 2020, and I think Apple has chosen just the right time to enter the 5G market. Today in Australia, 5G networks are within reach of nearly half of all Australians. Another thing we should talk about is the type of 5G the iPhone will support. There actually will be two models of the iPhone 12, and one of them will be for the US only, which supports the millimeter wave form of 5G. Here in Australia, the iPhone will be compatible with Sub 6. Now, just to give you a brief explanation, Sub 6 is the form of 5G that has greater range, but still very good speed. Whereas millimeter wave, which is coming to Australia, has shorter range, but much higher speeds. So what the networks intend to do here in Australia is to install millimeter wave 5G in areas like the CBD, train stations, airports, stadiums, crowded areas where a lot of people are gathered. So range might not be as great, but the speeds and capacity are there. But in the suburbs, sub six is fine. During our testing, we were, we were getting speeds up to 600 megabits per second on the sub-6 networks here in Australia. I was mainly using the Telstra network, and the speeds were remarkable. The iPhone 12 and the iPhone 12 Pro are both powered by Apple's latest silicon, the A14 Bionic chip. The A14 chip offers a 50% improvement in speed and graphics performance than the A13 chip we saw with the iPhone 11. Of course, one of the most attractive features of the iPhone 12 will be the camera. The iPhone 12 has a dual camera system and the iPhone 12 Pro a triple camera system. Now, each of the cameras also has a new seven element lens system, which allows for greater performance in low light and added clarity to your images. Night mode on the iPhone 12 has been improved even further. More light gets into the sensor and now it can be used on every lens on the camera, including the front selfie camera as well. The iPhone 12 Pro has a new optical image stabilization system as well. Not only is there stabilization within the lenses, but a new feature called sensor shift also adds to that stability. So that stabilization is actually performed at the sensor level. Another addition to the iPhone 12 Pro camera is a LiDAR sensor. This is it right here. You can see the small circle in the bottom right of the camera cluster there. This is used to scan distances and measure that distance from the sensor to surrounding objects. This technology is particularly useful when it comes to augmented reality. So a lot of app developers will be taking advantage of that LiDAR scanner to include augmented reality in their apps and to make it even more accurate. The iPhone 12 can also shoot 4K video with HDR recording that can capture more than 700 million colors. It's also the first smartphone with Dolby Vision HDR. And that means you can shoot 4K video at up to 60 frames per second. Now that's from a smartphone. That's remarkable. One new feature introduced with the iPhone 12 is MagSafe. This is a form of wireless charging that Apple has taken to another level. And what they've done, they've introduced a new type of charger. This is the MagSafe charger. So it, it looks like an overgrown version of the Apple Watch charger but it's designed to fit precisely on the back of the iPhone 12 and iPhone 12 Pro whenever you need to charge. One of the issues with wireless charging in the past has been you place the phone on the charging mat and if you haven't actually centered it properly and walk away, your iPhone isn't charging. 
So with MagSafe, all you need to do now is just position the MagSafe charger on the back and it will snap into place. MagSafe is pretty sturdy. In fact, once it's on the back, the connection is so strong, I can actually lift that up. And it's, I'm just totally lifting that up by the MagSafe cable. So you can just imagine this technology already being utilized for other accessories. Belkin has already come out with a range of accessories, including a three-in-one charging dock that makes use of MagSafe, but it is also gonna release a car mount. So as you can see from the strength of that connection, the magnet will easily be able to support a car mount. Now what you don't get with the iPhone 12 is a charger or earphones. Now this is something we predicted. I picked that the charger would have been in the box, but the, the exclusion of the earphones was a little bit of a surprise. Now Apple says it's an environmental decision. They just didn't want to have to, uh, have to produce hundreds of millions of chargers and earphones. Not only is it a reduction in Apple's costs, but Apple also says it's a big saving on the environment as well. So without those things in the packaging, they've become a lot smaller. The, the, this is the box for the iPhone 12, here's the box for the iPhone 12 Pro, and combined they're nearly the thickness of last year's packaging. So Apple's also thinking that the smaller the packaging, the easier it is and the more efficient their shipping will be. They can fit more than 70% more shipments in a single container, and again, that is a saving on the environment. There was a little confusion among customers about whether their existing charging setup will be able to charge the iPhone 12. And the answer is yes. If your charger has a cable with a lightning connection, then the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro still have a lightning port. So there's no difference to your current charging setup. Same thing in the car. If you've got a cable that charges your car, or if you charge wirelessly, you'll still be able to charge the iPhone 12. The iPhone 12 will be available in blue, green, black, white, and product red. The iPhone 12 will be priced at $1,349 for the 64 gigabyte, $1,429 for the 128 gigabyte, and $1,599, 256 gigabyte. The iPhone 12 Pro will be available in graphite, silver, gold, and Pacific blue. The iPhone 12 Pro will be priced at 1,699 Australian dollars for the 128 gigabytes, 1,869 dollars for 256 gigabytes, and 2,219 dollars for the 512 gig. The iPhone 12 and the iPhone 12 Pro are now available. These are easily the best smartphones Apple have ever produced. And with 5G on board, they're even more compelling to the customer. These are the smartphones to beat. Be sure to read our complete review at techguide.com.au. Thanks for watching.